think about the bare minimum furnishings and appliances that you need to live comfortably in the average home. You need a place to sleep, like a bed, a place to store your clothes, somewhere to prepare your food, some entertainment, and a bathroom. This plywood here represents the average home in America, about 2,500 square feet. And you can see we have all the essentials covered but we have space to add extra bedrooms, extra bathrooms. You can expand as you need. As long as you have the space, you could always build bigger and bigger homes. For the last 100 plus years, to find that space, people have moved further and further away from the city to suburbs like this. As we move into the 21st century, people want to move back into the city. Whether it's the young professional, whether it's the empty nester, there is a growing trend for urban living. But how do you meet that demand when land is so scarce? One option is to cram as many people as possible into a small footprint. Enter the micro apartment, a 300 to 400 square foot space. But how do you cram all this living in that small space? So Thomas, have you ever heard of a micro apartment? Yes. This is a micro apartment scaled down on a piece of plywood. Okay. You know, the challenge I would propose is how are you gonna lay out all of this living equipment that you need in this micro apartment? Okay. What's that, the TV? The TV on top of the, on top of the refrigerator. Oh, I don't know about that. That's gonna be a tight, tight turn to get by that right there. The should living pretty space well. should, should be bigger. It's taken off, all right. All right, so you move things around quite a bit, but I see what you did here. Looks like she's got some experience here, folks. Ooh. Are we doing Murphy bed? Is that cheating? I, it, you know what, let's go with it. Oh, bathroom. The most important I, part. I, I, I like having a bathroom. Yeah, well you need that. So you're gonna sit on the toilet and have the sink right in front of you? There's not a lot of room there. You see the challenges here, right? Trying yeah. to fit all this furniture in yeah. a 300 square foot apartment and make it livable, it's hard. It is, it's it super is. Hard. The challenge for the future house is how to take a small footprint and make it livable, comfortable, and sustainable. And the answer to that question may lie in robotics. Uh, Sarah? Hey. Hey. How you doing? Ross, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. you. So I heard you're the guy in robotics and bringing robotics to the home. Tell me about it. Yeah, so my team and I are working on how to bring robotics into walls, furniture, so that we can make spaces you know, much more functional, much more intelligent. All right, well, we need that. I mean, a small apartment like this, you got you know, a bathroom and a closet walking in, we got laundry, we got a kitchen, couch. I mean, you put a bed in here, you don't have any space. So this is small studio. This is a good example of all the big problems that small apartments have, because you think about it, you know, the bed takes a big chunk of the space. Then there's no way to divide the space. So you cannot have really two activities at the same time, because it's only one, there's no storage at all. So what we are doing is we are bringing a robotic wall that is gonna basically solve all those problems. So a single robotic wall is what we're installing exactly, today. Exactly, a robotic wall that is gonna move to create a, a separate space, it's gonna hide the bed, it's gonna bring double the storage that you would have in an apartment like this, and we are gonna yeah. install that right now. I like that. Let's just do it. Let's do it. Okay. So, this is the key component of the, of the whole system. Okay. Because what it, what it does is basically, you know, it has this electric motor that is gonna run through this track. This is gonna grab the wall, it's gonna move it left and right. This motor right here is gonna yeah, move exactly, it. Yeah, okay. exactly, exactly. And this is, you know, this is not very different to what you see in conventional systems like garage door openers, for example. Okay. So this could be a retrofit, this could be a new building. In this case, it's a clear retrofit. So you can see that in this particular case, because the baseboard had a, a weird shape, we had to cut it. Uh, but this is just gonna go there, a few screws, and it's gonna be ready to go. Nice, and uh, as far as power? Well, power, is, that's uh, incredibly simple. You know, conventional plug, we are just gonna go to a conventional outlet, and that's gonna be it, the whole power for the system. That's it, the whole system powered on one outlet? That's it. Sweet, all right, let's do it. So let's do it. Okay, so we just put this on the gap, and now we just go with some screws. Good, good. It's right. one more. So now we are gonna assemble uh, the chassis. So you see those square holes? Yep. Pretty simple. You just fit Got it. the colander and it just you goes. It. So we just tie these guys now and then we connect the, the whole chassis to the motor. Perfect. You know, once we hold that, now we have the chassis connected to the track on the side. Got it. We have an electric motor that is gonna run the whole system one way or another. That will move it back and forth. Exactly. Now we have a chassis, which is the structure, the main structure. I see some large rubber casters. Oh, heavy duty? Yes, yes, heavy duty. So what we did is rubber casters so that all the load can be well transferred because there's gonna be quite a bit of load. So we wanna treat floors very well. Got it, got it. And then these uh, little uh, brushes here in front, 
That, that one is basically so that, you know, imagine there's a pencil or a screw on the way. You don't want the wheels to go over that, so that's gonna basically push it, push it yeah, out of the way. It's just blocking. Yep. Exactly. Getting stuck in the casters. So now it's all about starting to build a cabinetry on top of this. So let's build our wall. Let's go. So once we have this in place, now it's like building a cabinet. Let's just drop this in, in the center. Okay, right there. You see the slots? There you go. Just guide me in there. Yes, a little more. More, more, more. Yep. Good. Good. Okay. Yep, I'm ready. There you go. Got it. So we just need the slats, the mattress, and that's it. All right, let's get it. All right. There let's we see. go with the mattress. So this is it. Uh, the system is completed. Right now it's in its closed position. Okay, and look at this. It makes it feel like a wide open living room. And that's the value. You know, what if you could create a big living room instead of having your bedroom here? What if it could disappear and have a, such a big space? You got a television. Yeah. Look at this. You got some storage here, I see. Look at that. Everything is customizable. You know, some people will want more storage. Some people will want a bigger entertainment area. Everything you can personalize depending on the user. I like it. I like it a lot. What if you could create a different space? And over here, there's a control interface, which is the brain of the system. That little and keypad there. Exactly, and just with a finger, just with a finger touch, in a very effortless way, the whole wall is moving. So I, I really feel like Superman right now because I'm pushing with one finger a huge, huge I mean, you're system. making it look easy. You're making it look really <laughs> easy. That's amazing. Look, to see a whole wall of that size and scale move that easily with one little finger like exactly. that, wow. And Ooh. now we have two spaces. I see what you're doing here. Look at that. And now we made one space smaller and we just created another space on the other side. So what do we got in here? A lot of things uh, we got here. First of all, you know, a walk-in closet. Uh, lots of storage wait, here. Wait, so the lights go on to show you your clothes. Yeah. Wait, wait, this is the walk-in closet. Like in a typical house, this would be a framed exactly. area and you would be wasted space. A, a whole lot of wasted space. All the circulation area would be lost. Look at all the storage. And here you have a you know, ridiculous amount of, of storage Look in your studio. Wow. That's Plenty not all. Storage. You have a storage. Now you could also have uh, an office area, you know, home office area. So you got power. You got you know, bring your desk chair over. You got exactly. a home office. And you just create a home office. Wow. But that's not all. Alexa, tell Ori to move my bed out. Sleep well. You got to be kidding me. Your bed is robotic too. Yes. <laughs> That now, is insane. Now you are creating a bedroom here and you still have a living room on the other side. So this bed looks a little bit lower to the ground. It looks like a full. Could you get this thing in different sizes, yeah. heights? Exactly, that's all customizable. It could be a full, it could be a queen, it could be a lower bed, it could be a higher bed. The reason this one specifically is low because we like the idea of having a bench area on the other side. Okay. So you see the bed kind of fits on that volume, and now we can have a So the cozy. bed is actually underneath this exactly. when it's closed. Exactly, and, and now we can have a cozy you know, sitting area. And a little entertainment space, I like it, exactly. I like it. One of the questions that I do have is, we're so fixated on electronics these days, what happens at a power outage? That's a great question, and we are not trying to reinvent the wheel here. We are looking at systems that have been in buildings for decades. Think of garage door openers. What happens when the power goes out? You have a, a mechanical, a manual disengage. So if you come all the way here, there's a manual disengage that you can just disengage and now you can push the system manually. So you can push it open or close. Exactly. It's not as magical and as effortless, but you can go to bed. Gotcha. If the power goes out. Gotcha. Now, I mean, I see it in the micro apartment where this wall really maximizes the space, being able to open and close it. I could see it being used in a suburban home as well, though, you know, for a, you know, a walk-in closet or a guest bed, being able to open and expand it or shut it down. Yeah. I mean, the vision is to make a space be more. So that could be smaller spaces, bigger spaces, it could be offices, it could be hotel rooms, restaurants, hospitals. So we are actually developing, using the same technologies, we are developing prototypes of drop-down beds from the ceiling, drop-down tables from the so ceiling, cool. closets, walls, all this kind of you know, army of architecture and furniture with superpowers. I mean, it's amazing technology. It's great to, to be here and see this technology unfold before our eyes. You know, thank you for the tour. I appreciate it very much. And hopefully one day I'll get this in my house. Yes. We hope is that in five, 10 years, these technologies are going to be as common as garage doors or elevators in our buildings. So cool.